the other instruction that we have in this uh, RST category is the trap instruction which is a not maskable interrupt. So, that is a, that is a non maskable interrupt. So, you cannot mask it off, but these instructions uh, these uh, interrupts RST 5.5, 6.5, 7.5. So, these are hardware interrupts. So, these hardware interrupts, uh, so they are maskable. Okay? So, the, the, we can mask off these interrupts. So, we will see how they can be done and they are also vectored interrupt because the addresses are fixed. Okay? So, they are automatically vectored as per this table is shown. So, they are masked. They, so, this masking of this interrupt 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, it can be done at two levels. The one level is via the interrupt enable flip flop and uh, the EIDI instruction. So, that is uh, one possibility. So, you can uh, you can uh, set the EIDI instruction, you can use the EIDI instruction to change the interrupt enable uh, flip flop and uh, all the um, all the maskable interrupts will get masked. So, if you put the uh, DI instruction. So, this interrupt enable flip flop, so it will control the whole maskable interrupt process. And also, you can individually mask out the interrupts like so there are individual controls, so individual mask, mask flip flops are available and you can control individual interrupts that way. So, EI or DI, so DI instruction will uh, mask off all the interrupts, okay, all the maskable interrupts, but you may want that only say 6.5 be uh, masked. So, 5.5 and 7.5 should remain. So, how to do this thing for that purpose? So, we have to follow some other technique. We have to set reset uh, the interrupts corresponding to individual uh, lines. Okay. So, this is the diagram that shows uh, the situation. So, we have got this uh, flip flops uh, mask 7.5 or M 7.5, M 6.5, and M 5.5. So, if these uh, bits are made 0, so you see that this is inverted here. So, this bit is, uh, so, the, so if say 6.5 this bit is 0, so you will get a 1 at the in, input of this AND gate and then this interrupt enable flip flop is there, suppose this bit is 1, so this one, this is 1. Now, if, now if that uh, 6.5 interrupt comes, then that interrupt is allowed to reach the processor. So, this is actually going to the processor. Now, if this bit is set to 1, if M6.5 uh, flip flop is set to 1, so that is the 6.5 will be masked off because this uh, AND gate will get an input of 0. So, whatever be the, be the value of RST 6.5, so it will not reach the output. So, we have got uh, this mask flip flops M7.5, M6.5 and M5.5 for masking out these interrupts individually. But for INTR, we do not have this individual masking. So, INTR can be masked off by this interrupt enable flip flop only. Okay, so, through the EIDI instructions only, so they cannot be, it cannot be masked off otherwise. This RST 7.5 flip flop, so there is another uh, RST 7.5 interrupt, it has got another uh, flip flop that we will see later. So, this is basically uh, keeping the memory, like see uh, this uh, 6.5, uh, 5.5, etcetera. So, these interrupts, so you see that if this interrupt has to be sensed, then the, the interrupt line must be active for that 17.5 T cycle, uh, T states. Whereas, for 7.5, so since this is a flip flop, so uh, if this interrupt occurs, then the value will get latched here. So, when the processor checks at the end of that 17.5 clock cycles, uh, then also it will find that flip flop, uh, flip flop value to be equal to 1, so that interrupt will be uh, sensed. Okay. So, this gives us uh, some special uh, facility with the RST 7.5 flip flop. So, that is uh, you, you, it can be of much shorter duration than this 6.5, 5.5 and INTR pin. So, we will come to that later. So, the interrupt process uh, first uh, then uh, as far as this uh, interrupt process is concerned, first of all the process has to be enabled through the EI instruction. If EI is not executed, then that uh, that interrupt enable flag may be a flip flop may be 0 as a result none of the interrupts will be reaching the processor. And the 8085 uh, just like that um, um, the non vectored inter uh, non vectored interrupt that is a, a like that int INTR. So, here also 8085 will check the interrupt during the execution of every instruction and if there is an interrupt and the interrupt is enabled by the interrupt mask. So, this is the additional thing that we have here, it will check that M 7.5, M 6.5, M 5.5 uh, flip flop 
and then only it will uh, it will say it will say that the interrupt uh, is uh, is uh, received by the processor so it will the processor if that flip flop is uh, zero if the flip flop value is zero then the processor will sense that interrupt and it will complete executing the current instruction and reset the interrupt flip flop the flip flop will be reset and the processor will execute a call instruction and this call instruction is a hardwired call. So, now for unlike that INTR where the device had to provide uh, the vector address through some special arrangement of buffers and all that. So, here we do not need all those things. Here the processor uh, it is fixed, the addresses are fixed. So, processor will directly go to the corresponding address and that address is also obtained in the similar fashion like 5.5 .5 if it is RST 5.5. .5, so, 5.5 .5 multiplied by 8. So, it will be uh, 42, uh, 44. So, it will go to the location 44 and start executing from there. So, that way it continues. So, when the processor uh, executes the call instruction, it saves the address of the next instruction on the stack. The processor jumps to the specific service routine and the service routine must include the instruction EI to re-enable the interrupt process. So, this is these are same as uh, that uh, INTR interrupt process once the only the sensing is sensing part is different and then uh, there should be the rate instruction at the end of the uh, service routine so that the execution will return from the uh, ISR. Now, how, since the masks are there, so we must uh, know a technique by which these uh, masks can be manipulated. Okay? So, one way to manipulate uh, that interrupt enable flip flop is uh, by through the EIDI instruction that interrupt enable flip flop uh, that uh, particular flip flop will be modified by EI or DI, but this individual masks for 5.5, 6.5 and 7.5 they are manipulated using the SIM instruction. So, there is a special instruction SIM which stands for set interrupt mask okay? using this same SIM instruction we can uh, manipulate this uh, setting of, uh, of this mask flip flops. So, this instruction it will take the bit pattern in the accumulator and applies it to the interrupt mask enabling and disabling uh, uh, the interrupt mask so that will result in enabling and disabling of specific interrupt. So, it will so for using that instruction. So, first of all we have to set the accumulator to a particular bit pattern and after that when the SIM is executed. So, individual bits of the accumulator they will have some special meaning as we shall see. Then, uh, then this uh, accordingly those flip flops will be set to different values and uh, this mask patterns will be set, this masking of the flip flop will take place. So, this is the um, line, this is the uh, um, uh, diagram that shows uh, how this in individual bits of the accumulator will be interpreted by the SIM instruction. Now, uh, there is one thing that uh, this uh, SIM instruction also helps in uh, other operation which is known as the serial data transmission. So, we will see it after some, uh, some time. So, the first two bits SDO and SDE, so they are for serial data input output type of operation. Okay? So, for our uh, discussion uh, now, so these two bits are of no use. So, uh, uh, so if this uh, SDE bit is set to 0, so, it will ignore this SDO line. Okay? So, for our discussion for the time being this SDE line uh, serial data enable. So, this line will be 0. So, this bit will be 0. So, that this SDO bit setting does not have any meaning. Okay? Then this bit number 5 is not used by the uh, by in this uh, process. So, this is it can be any arbitrary value do not care value. Then uh, remaining 5 bits. So, they are used to control the flip flops. Okay? So, uh, this uh, this M 5.5, .5, so this is the reset mask, uh, reset 5.5 .5 mask, this is RST 6.5 mask, this is RST 7.5 mask. So, if this mask bit is 0, that means we want to set uh, the interrupt to be available and if this uh, mask bit is 1, then we want that, then we want that the interrupt should not be available, okay? the interrupt should not reach the processor. And whether we want to set this mask bit or not, so that is set done by this MAC bit. So, mask set enable. So, if this bit is 0, so it will ignore bit number 0 to 2 and if this bit is 1, so it will set the masks according to the bits 0 to 2. 
Now you see that uh, there is uh, so since the same uh, instruction, so it is used for both uh, serial data transmission and this interrupt masking. So that is why we have got two guards actually. So the SDE is one guard. So that is useful when you are doing only serial data transmission. Uh, so then that bit will be set to one. And uh, if you are not uh, if you are not doing that, then this bit will be set to zero. Similarly. If you are using this SIM instruction for serial data transmission and not for mask setting, then this MAC bit should be set to 0. So, that if this MAC bit is 0, then uh, this mask setting does not have any meaning. So, then this uh, then we can use it for serial data transmission by setting this SDL, SDE line to 1. And if we really want that this uh, mask bit uh, will be set, mask bit will be set, then we should make this MAC bit 1 and uh, then the then this pattern will be set to the mask flip flops of the interrupts and this R 7.5. So, this is the uh, this setting of this uh, RST 7.5 flip flop. So, uh, in this diagram that we have seen, so this RST 7.5, so this flip flop. So, this flip flop can be set by uh, getting that RST uh, by setting this R 7.5 bit. So, the accumulator has to be set a value as per our requirement and then these are then the same same instruction has to be executed. So, this is the details that bit 0 is the mask for RST 5.5, 1 is the mask for 6.5, 2 is the mask for 7.5. If the mask bit is 0, then the interrupt is available. If the mask bit is 1, the interrupt is not available. So, it is masked off. Bit number 3, it is used for enabling uh, if uh, it is an enable for setting the mask. So, if this, if this is 0, then the mask setting will be ignored and the previous settings will continue. And if the bit is 1, then the new settings will be applied. Okay. And this sim instruction, it is a mul there are multiple purposes as I have said. So, the serial data transmission is also uh, used here. So, bit number 3 is necessary uh, to tell the microprocessor whether to use the interrupt, set the interrupt mask or not. And similarly, that SDE line, so that is used to say whether we are going for serial data transmission or not. Now, this uh, RST 7.5 is the only interrupt that has memory. So, as I was telling, so that uh, it has got a flip flop R7.5, so that is uh, for latching that uh, occurrence of that interrupt. So, if a signal on RST 7.5 arrives wh while it is masked, a flip flop will remain remember the signal. So, it might be that the, say the um, RST 7.5 is currently masked off, but still the, if the interrupt occurs that flip flop value will be uh, set to 1. And when this RST 7.5 will be unmasked, then the processor will be interrupted even if the device has removed the interrupt signal, because uh, that flag is set, that flip flop is set. So, when this uh, uh, if the after some time uh, if the interrupts are enabled, then uh, this uh, processor will get that interrupt. So, uh, this flip flop is reset when the processor responds to the 7.5 interrupt. So, this is basically the purpose like if some if we are doing something and uh, we were busy, the processor was busy doing something at which this interrupt has occurred 7.5. So, it will remain latched in the system and later on. Uh, the processor may like to respond to that interrupt. Okay. So, this facility is provided and it is not provided with other flip flop other interrupts like 6.5 and 5.5. So, only with 7.5 it is there. So, if you want to reset uh, this uh, bit, so if you if you want that the processor should not get the interrupt, then you can uh, reset this 7.5 memory uh, by the using this bit 4. So, bit 4 of the accumulator in the same instruction allows explicitly resetting the 7.5 memory even if the microprocessor did not respond to it. So, in this uh, slide, so if you, so this is reset 7.5. So, if you, if you, if you keep this bit as 1 and after that execute a sim instruction, then the RST 7.5 flip flop will be cleared. Okay. So, even if uh, I was, when the processor was busy, the, inter the interrupt has occurred and the flip flop is set. So, instead of going into the interrupt service routine, so we may just like to reset that flip flop, reset that flip flop so that we do not uh, inter respond to the interrupt. Okay. So, for that purpose, so we can keep this RST 7.5 line 1 and uh, execute the same instruction. 
So, it can also be used for uh, data transmission as I said that serial data um, the SID and SODP pins are there for um, 8085 for serial data transmission. Now, this bit 6 will be used to tell the microprocessor whether or not to perform serial data transmission. If it is 0, then do not uh, transfer serial data. If it is 1, then when the SIM is in, uh, executed, then this SOD line has to be uh, the, the value to be sent on the SOD has to be placed on the bit 7 of the accumulator. So, whatever be the value at bit 7, so that will go to the serial data out line and bit 5 is not used by the SIM line. So, we take an example, suppose we want to set the interrupt masks of uh, so that this 5.5 is enabled, 6.5 is masked off and 7.5 is also enabled. So, for that purpose we have to first identify the content of the accumulator that it should be there. So, we want to enable 5.5 and 7.5. Okay. So, we want to enable 5.5, so bit 0 should be equal to 0. We want to disable 6.5, so bit 1 should be equal to 1. We want to enable RST 7.5, so bit 2 will be equal to 0. Now, we have to allow this mask setting, whatever mask we are setting, this 0, 1, 0 should be allowed. So, accordingly, this MAC bit should be equal to 1. So, this bit 3 is made equal to 1. RST 7.5 is enabled and we do not want it the flip flop to be reset, that is if the, some interrupt has occurred, so this flip flop uh, that interrupt should be there. So, do not reset the flip flop, so this R 7.5 bit is set to 0, bit 5 uh, that, that is do not care, so that is not used and we are not going to use for uh, serial data transmission, so bit 6 and bit 7 they are made 0. So, this is the bit pattern that we have to set in the accumulator, so that is done here. So, this pattern is uh, 0A, so this uh, mo most significant byte is all 0 and the next byte is 1010, so that is A. So, first we enable interrupt, so it will uh, will enable all interrupts including INTR. Then we move the pattern 0A to the accumulator, so that is done by the MVI instruction MVI A comma 0A. So, it will set uh, the accumulator to the proper pattern that we want and then execute the SIM instruction. So, when the SIM instruction is executed, this particular bit pattern, so this will be uh, setting the, um, this will be setting uh, the appropriate uh, flip flops and masks and the desired functionality will be achieved. That is 5.5 and 7.5 will be enabled and 6.5 will be masked off. Next important thing that we have is about the triggering level. Okay. Now, you see that uh, the, if you look into classification of interrupts, then one classification that we have is, one classification that we have is that of um, uh, 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 triggering level. So, trigger level of interrupts, so they can be on that basis, so we can classify it into two categories. One is level triggered, one is level triggered and another is edge triggered. Okay. Just like flip flops, we have level triggering and edge triggering. So, here also we have got level triggered and edge triggered. So, level triggered means uh, uh, if this is the processor and this is the line, the interrupting line that is there. So, if it is a level triggered interrupt, then for the line to be sensed, the level of the interrupt should be high. So, it is like this. So, so the high value will be sensed by the uh, processor. On the other hand, edge triggered means the edge will be sensed. Okay. So, this rising edge will be sensed as the interrupting point. So, you see that uh, for this thing to happen, for this rising edge sense to be sensing to be, uh, to be happen to happen, so we should uh, be able to latch the occurrence of this particular event. Now, so far whatever we have said that 5.5, 6.5 they do not have any separate latch or memory, but 7.5 has got a latch with associated with it. So, this 7.5 is basically an edge triggered flip flop. Uh, edge triggered uh, interrupt because when that interrupt occurs, then the value will be put into the um, uh, that uh, latch will be set accordingly. Uh, even if that line goes low after some time, say after some time it goes low, so this uh, rising edge, so this will be remembered by the flip flop and uh, this triggering will take place. Okay. So, uh, this uh, when a positive edge appears on the RST 7.5 line, a logic 1 is uh, uh, logic 1 is stored in the 
uh, flip-flop as a pending interrupt and now uh, this value is stored in the flip-flop so, so it does not the line is no more needed to be kept high okay so the processor can check the interrupt uh, that that is to be recognized so in the so it checks whether that uh, any interrupt has occurred and accordingly it can do that and the line must uh, go to 0 and back to 1 before new interrupt has occurred so this is another good thing like otherwise for level triggered interrupt what happens is that if the processor as soon as the enable line the EI, line, EI bit is executed then if the value of that line is still 1 that interrupt line is still 1 so that will be sensed as another interrupt but in case of edge triggering so it is based on the edge so if, if uh, the another edge has not come that is in between the line has not gone down to 0 and then again it has uh, risen to 1 so if that has not happened so that will not be taken as a new interrupt. So, this way the edge triggering uh, may be helpful then this uh, uh, RST 6.5 and 5.5 they are level sensitive and the interrupting signal must remain present until the processor checks for the interrupts. Okay. So, this way this uh, triggering level so, so we have got various combinations like INTR is also a level triggered uh, interrupt. So, we have got all these combinations available in the micro in the 8085 processor. So, depending upon the type of uh, device that you are going to connect, so you can have this uh, level triggering or edge triggering. Accordingly, you can choose the type of interrupt to, to which it should be connected. So, uh, next part is sometimes we li would like to see what is the current mask setting because maybe you know, we are uh, we do not want to disturb the current mask setting, only change it a bit. So, we do not want to uh, put a completely new setting, but just want to change the bit. So, for that purpose, so there is another instruction called RIM, which uh, reads as a read inst interrupt mask, RIM, uh, read inter interrupt mask. So, what it will do? It will load the accumulator with an 8 bit pattern showing the status of each interrupt pin and mask. Okay. So, what happens is that the RST 7.5 memory, so that R 7.5, so that comes to the uh, bit number 6 then uh, this 6.5 uh, pin, pin status so that will come to 6 p 6.5 this 5.5 pin will come here then this interrupt enable flag so that will come as bit number 3 and this mask flip flop content m 7.5 6.5 and 5.5 they will come to the bits 2 1 and 0 then this uh, bit number 7 so this is reserved for serial input data or serial data input so, uh, this RIM instruction is also used for uh, serial data input. So, the SIM was used for serial data output. So, RIM is used for serial data input. So, if we are not using that, uh, then that bit has to be dis uh, discarded. But otherwise, the rest of the bits, so they will give, uh, give us the current interrupt mask setting in the processor. And this will be useful, like if you want to change the mask setting slightly without disturbing others. So, you can use uh, this particular situation. So, so, this is the thing that this RIM setting, so this will be affecting the thing the, the previous diagram, so it is uh, shown like this. So, if the, uh, the serial data line, so whatever is available in the a SID pin, so that will be available in the SDI bit here. Then if some uh, RST 5.5 interrupt is pending, then this P 7.5 bit is 1 if 6.5 is pending then p6.5 is 1 and this is 7.5 is pending then i am sorry so this is uh, this diagram is uh, slightly uh, so this p7.5 6.5 and 5.5 so 7.5 is at bit number 6 so 7.5 should be at uh, yeah 7.5 is at bit number 6 so this should be 7.5 not 5.5 so this should be 7.5 this should be 5.5. So, 5.5, 6.5 and 7.5. So, they are storing the corresponding pending bits. Then this IE bit, so this will store whether uh, the interrupt enable flip flop content. So, that will be stored here and this will store the mask bits. Okay. So, that way I can through the RIM instruction I can get this complete status. So, this bit uh, 0 to 2, they show the current setting of the mask for the RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5. So, they will give you the content of the mask flip flops. They can be used by a program to read the mask setting. Then bit 3, 
So this is used to, to, to show whether the maskable interrupt process is enabled or not. It will return the content of the interrupt enable flip flop and it can be used to uh, used by programs to determine whether interrupts are enabled or not. So, if you want to check whether the interrupts are enabled or not, so you can execute a ream instruction and then check bit number 3 of it to see whether the interrupts are enabled. Bits 4 to 6, so they are actually um, for so the pending interrupts as I said for 5.5, 7.5, 6.5 and 5.5. 4 and 5 they return the status of uh, RST 5.5, 6.5. Bit 6 will return that uh, the RST 7.5 memory flip flop, okay. So, and this 7 bit 7 is for serial data input, okay. Then the ream instruction, so it is for the serial input data, whatever SIDP in whatever data is coming, so it can be it, it will come to bit number 7. Now, so we can uh, since there are so many uh, interrupt lines, there are five interrupt lines. So, so interrupt may occur during ISR and they can remain pending. So using the ream instruction, we can check whether any interrupts are pending. And if we do not want to respond to those interrupts, so accordingly we can clear those uh, flip flops. Okay. So this is the advantage of being able to find out uh, the interrupts of RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 without having to enable the low level interrupt like like this uh, um, INTR. So, we do not want to uh, reset uh, enable INTR. So, we want to just access other interrupts. So, we can do that. So, this is an example to show how to set mask to enable RST 6.5 without modifying the masks for 5.5 and 7.5. So, 5.5 and 7.5 whatever setting is done that should continue. We just want to enable the RST 6.5 uh, bit. Okay. So, how to do this? So, we have to first execute a ream instruction to know the current setting of 5.5 and 7.5 and then we have to use seam instruction after modifying the accumulator. Okay. So, uh, we, can, we can do this thing. So, suppose the current uh, setting of RST 5.5 and 7.5 are they are enabled and the interrupt process is disabled. So, this is the current setting. So, if you if you execute a ream instruction, you will get the bit pattern like this because this uh, 5.5 and 7.5, so they are enabled, 6.5 is disabled now and I interrupt enable is disabled, so IE is disabled. Now, so after getting this pattern, so we, uh, we have to, we now we want to set a new mask. So, this bit for MAC bit will be set to 1, so that so we or this content with the uh, 0 0.8 hex. Okay, so this content is odd with uh, 0 0.8 hex. So this bit becomes uh, set, and then we do an AND immediate with 0 0.d hex. So when you do this, so this will turn off the serial data. That is uh, this 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 SDE bit will be turned off, and we want to, we, but we do not reset that 7.5. Uh, we do not want to touch that is the uh, 7.5. Okay, so that way the 7.5 will not be touched. This uh, this M 7.5, so whatever be the value, so it is ended with 1, so the value will be just coming here. Then this, uh, uh, then 6.5 is uh, turned off, so 6.5 is uh, this one, so this M 6.5, uh, so this is 0, 0, 0, 0, this is 1, so this 1 is uh, for this uh, coming for this MAC, then this uh, 7.5, so it continues. So, 6.5, so this bit is made 0, so this will be uh, ended with that and accordingly we will we'll get a 0 here. So, this process will, uh, this M 6.5, so this uh, interrupt was enabled, okay. so this interrupt was disabled and then uh, after this, after this, so this interrupt becomes enabled, whereas the status of this uh, 7.5 and 5.5, they remain unchanged. 6.5, it was disabled previously, now it becomes enabled. So, without touching other uh, interrupts, so you can do set reset in the particular interrupt. Okay.